So the lead-off track, Van Halen's first album, still one of their most popular songs. I'm going to take a look at it today. Um, so many things to talk about in Eddie Van Halen's guitar playing. We're going to focus on one small aspect of it with this song, and that's Eddie's use of triads. Okay. Now, I have another video on my channel of uh, the keyboard song, Dreams, from Van Halen. And it's a similar concept. You could see how they tie in together, where Eddie's overall musical thought process, you know, he, he knew how to use triads to create this amazing musical landscape. So, on the guitar, the key to it is the open strings. And what I mean by that is this. If you take your second string, third string, fourth string. What's the sound? It's a triad, right? That's a G major chord in second inversion. If I go like this, a D, a D, a D, right? By the way, I'm detuned to half step, just like the uh, recording. So, <clears throat> you have a G chord. If you take your first finger and you bar those three strings on any fret, you'll get a triad. So here on the first fret, second, and so on, all the way up the neck. Now, here's the, the key to it though, right? You have to know where the root notes are. So if we have, what, what's a G major triad? G, B, D root, third, fifth. Well, in the order here, we've got the fifth, the root, the third. So the middle string of those three strings, the second, third, and fourth string, that's where your root is. So if I have a G chord, I now have a A flat chord, A, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, B flat, E, F, F sharp, and right back to G again on the 12th fret, an octave higher than I started, right? Okay, let's see what Eddie plays. So the first thing we have is that move. So we're going from the 5th fret to the 7th fret. Now, there's a little bit of uh, ambiguity. It could just be that Eddie's playing a power chord here on the 5th fret with the D and the G strings. But it could be that he's playing the whole triad. I think he is. Right. So you're going, what did I say, the, the middle note right on the G string. That's the root. It's a C note. G, A, B, C. So I'm playing a C chord up the whole step. That would be a D chord. Right. Little scratch mute there. D chord again. Now this thing. Let's take a look at what that is. In order to do that, I want you to go back, let's say to the second fret. Okay? This is an A major shape. Everyone knows it from the open. Right? Okay, so what we're gonna do. When we bar it with the first finger, then we do this trick. So you get an F sharp A D. That's a D major chord in the first inversion. You got the third, the fifth, and the root. Okay, so you're going from a one chord, key of A, to the four chord, in the key of D, and in the key of A, D chord. that thing, right? So, if you move it up here to a D chord, and you do this trick, four notes away from D is a G. Now, that's where your root note is. So, takes that shape, moves it up a whole step. Now we're on the A chord, back to the first shape that we did, which is the G chord shape. We're on the ninth fret, 
The middle note is our root note. That's an E note. Now, let's go over that again. C, D, D, G, A, E. That's an odd progression. C, D, D, G, A, E. Right? But man, that's pretty cool sounding. The other thing that makes it even cooler is that the entire time this chord progression is being played underneath an E note on the bass. And a little thing about that, it's hard to play. You think that's the simplest thing in the world. It's not. I'll tell you why. The muting is huge. You got it and hit it just right so you don't get any harmonics. See that? If your fingers aren't flattened down, it's not getting any overtones, right? It, it, that's a tricky thing to do. Anyway, so what do we have then? We have a C over E, dark sound. D over E, that's great. G over E, which makes it like an E minor 7 chord. A over E, and then finally, that's the resolve. It's the E major. So you see how it was all leading up to that. Like that's that's the home chord he wanted to get to the whole time. Just and that that's the genius part of the triads, you know, on, on the main riff. And he follows that up even in the guitar solo. That same shape is used. Let's take a look at that. So here, see what I'm doing there? I'm on 14th fret. It's that same shape. So my middle note on the 14th fret is an A. So I'm playing an A major chord, E, A, C sharp, D, E. That's the shape of it, okay? So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go like this. That, that's, you have just li this little melody on top. just arpeggiating the A chord down. The bass at that part, he's playing an A, and then you just move it down a whole step to G. Same thing, then move back to A. Then this. So we're bending an A note up to B. Down to A, then we go back to the G, and we have this little thing. Okay, those are different shapes. Let's see what those are. We've got a D, uh, we've got an A, a D, and an F sharp. It's like the D chord down there. Yeah. And he's going to move up chromatically. D. D sharp, E, right, and that takes us back to the home key of E, and you see that little thing? That's like a, that's like a jazz look. to move chromatically like that, and that's one of the things in in Van Halen's music that sometimes gets overlooked. Is that Eddie had such a sense of humor sometimes when he played. Like, not in the sense that he was being sarcastic or anything like that, but he, he had this playful sort of thing to it that, you know, his, his, their father, Eddie and Alex's father, was a jazz clarinetist. And so, I mean, they grew up listening to, to jazz records, and, I mean, I'm sure they jammed with their dad every now and then. I mean, I don't know how much formal jazz they knew, but, I mean... One of the things about Van Halen is that their time feel, 
uh, when I say they, I'm talking about the rhythm section, Eddie, Alex, and Michael Anthony. They had such a groove that you, you, you just couldn't match that. All the other bands that came after them, all of the, you know, pop metal bands and stuff, none of them had the same kind of groove as Van Halen. It was all just heavy-handed, flat foot kind of stuff. But, I mean, you think of tunes like, I mean, for example, Hot for Teacher. I mean, that thing is like a big band tune, right? I mean, I, I just hear it that way. You know, I mean, I could hear the horn section doing it and whatever. And, and that's one of the things. I mean, it's like that's a good example of a tune that not only is that thing kick ass, but it's like what a sense of humor behind it, too. And like a, just a, a, I don't know, fun quality to it. You know, I mean, great musicians, but also just fun music to play. But they could also be dark. I mean, this tune's pretty dark. Fun with the devil, right? Anyway, point is behind all this is the takeaway is to experiment with triad shapes on the guitar, right? So what you could do if you want to go through um, chord progressions, for example, um, I'll start here and on the A, and I'm going to do one, four, five. So I know A is, is on the G string, right? So that's my root note. Four would be D. I know my D is here. There's five, so. Now I went one, flat, three, four. Maybe I'll go one, five, flat, three, four. I don't know. See, right off the bat, just doing that, you get just a little bit of a taste of that kind of Van Halen sound. I'm no Eddie Van Halen, but I mean, it's a kind of cool thing just to experiment with. And from there, you can use all kinds of other little formations that you know, and see where those things lead you to. And I didn't even do like, you know, the relative minors or anything yet. So, I mean, you could experiment with that as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's breakdown. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this to come. And thanks for watching.